Okay, let's quickly and go through its uh, proof. We, I just want to go through the proof because. It's an if and or. So how you have to interpret? Okay, let's say our claim, final claim is here what? Whether T is a minimum sufficient statistics or all. This is our final claim. Now what we are checking is for any pair T of x, y, is this constant, is this ratio is going to be constant if and only if T of x equals to T, y. If this is the case, then we are going to talk about T is minimal sufficient service. So here basically you are going to check some condition, right? Yes, this check is and that checking condition itself has if and only if in it, okay? And if that ratio is going to constant, that means, so first of all, that ratio is constant if T of X equals to TY and on the other hand, if TX equals to TY, that ratio should be constant. If that is happening, then we are going to say that, so in a way, you are right, like this is kind of giving a sufficient conditions in terms of an another condition which is necessary and I mean which has both forward and reverse direction. It itself is not like a complete characterization, it is basically giving a condition, sufficient condition under which T is a minimal sufficient statistic. But what is that condition? It has implication both forward and reverse direction. Okay, all of you see his point? See, I am not saying this, uh, I am not saying if and only if here. I am only saying then. That means if this condition holds, then T is a minimal sufficient statistics. That condition holds means basically I am giving a sufficient condition. And that sufficient condition itself is characterized in terms of both forward and reverse condition. Okay, now let us uh, understand this. Okay, this is the first step. You give me a, a statistic T. What I did is I construct a partition. What I do is I look into all T such that T of x was to T for some x. Right, what I did is this was my space. Like uh, last time, maybe let us take this are my 3. All these points here, they mapped into let us say T2, all this mapped into T1 and let us call all these points here mapped into T3. So this is my image, right? So T1, T2, T3 are my image of my space under statistic T. Let us call this as capital tau. And now partition. We know that this already defines a partition, right? You take one point T here, then I know, then I have T equals to that of all points such that T of X goes to T. For, so for example, you give me T1, then that set is all the points which are mapping to that T1. Now, I am going to, so in this case I have three ranges, right, 81, 82. What I am going to do is, I am going to select three points from each one of this. What are these three points? Let us call them X T1, X T2, X T3, okay. So X T1 is coming from here, X T2 is coming from here and X T3 is coming from here. Suppose if I take x of 
T1, my claim is this is equals to T1. All of you agree with this? Because every point here, this xt1 is coming from this space, right? Every this point, when I apply t, capital T, this has to give me. So these are, let's say these are, I'm fixing these three points. Let's take them to be three points. Now, what we'll do is take any point x, somewhere in this, one of this, I don't know what it is. And I know that this point, I can pair like with its, uh, let's call this cent some kind of uh, representative of each of this set. Suppose if x comes from xt1, then I'm going to associate it with this xt1. If this x comes from this region, I'm going to associate it with xt2 like that. So for each x, I can associate this with some some t, let's simply call it some t. which is uh, one of these points, right? You give me any x, I'm able to find what, which, uh, which group it belongs to and find out the representative point from there and I can associate like this. Can I do this? Right? Okay, now let's see. So on this point, I know that t of x equals to t of xt you agree so x is a point and i have paired it with its representative point from that set so i know that if x and xt both belong to the same set if that's the case uh, t will be assigned the same value to both of them okay now i want to see given a point x and theta what I will do is I'm going to divide this guy by x of xt, the representative point there, theta divided by f of xt by theta. So what, now if I want to apply the factorization theorem here to conclude that this is a sufficient statistic, what I want to do here is I want to write it in the form of g of t given t and h of theta like this, okay. So now, if this t is a sufficient statistics, I need to write it like this. And now what I'm going to assume? I'm going to assume that this guy is a constant because t of x equals to t x t. So if that is the case, can I say that this factor here is a constant in the sense it does not depend on theta. Can I take that as my h of x? If it does not depend on theta, it better depend on x quantity right we have and this quantity here now it depends through t and now I can take it as g of t given theta. Now if t of x equals to ty what I have just argued is this ratio is a constant and I mean yeah this uh, sorry I am used the fact that if this t of x equals to ty, this is a constant under that condition and I have just demonstrated that if that is the case, t is a sufficient statistic. Okay, right now all I have done is I have established the fact that t is a sufficient statistic. Now let us use the other fact. What we will do is, we will now assume that this is a constant. Okay, now I have partitioned in such a way that you give me a point x. You, you give me a point x and I came up with an another pair with it. For, I mean, I came with another pair, another point to pair with this. Now, I know that these two pair will be such that t of x equals to t of x t. 
okay now under this this is this ratio is a constant if and only if right now i have point x and y for which this is same because of this i can now this is i am assuming that this is a constant that is what exactly i am doing this so i have written f of x theta here i need to show that uh, this pdf factorizes into g and h function so to get that i have divided and multiplied them by f of x t and now i am exploiting the fact that this ratio when i look into the pair x and x t that does not depend on theta that is when i use the fact and then it is okay now what i want to do is all we said that when this under this condition i am able to demonstrate that if i have a t which is satisfying this i have shown that t is a sufficient statistic now let's say how to show that sufficient statistics is going to be a minimal sufficient statistic now so now let's take another sufficient statistic t prime and we know that if t prime is a sufficient statistics f of x theta i should be able to find a h prime into g prime t given theta right is this my factorization theorem correctly applied here i have simply applied my factorization theorem here now what i will do is assume now i am going to going to assume this holds let's say t prime equals to t prime on this sufficient statistics t prime and now i am going to apply my factorization theorem and see how does this behave x of theta divided by f of y of theta and i know that this is equals to under this h prime of x g prime of t prime of x given theta divided by h prime of y g prime of t prime of y given theta but now this point x and y are such that t prime of x equals to t prime of y so this quantity is this quantity are the same g prime of t of x and g prime of t prime of y because both t prime of x and t prime of y are the same so knock off it now it is now this ratio is h prime of x h prime does not depend on theta and i have h prime of y which also does not depend on theta now can i argue that this ratio does not depend on theta and we know that if this is the case now we have just demonstrated that this ratio is a constant does not that depend so this should imply t of x equals to t of y on these two points so we just demonstrated that if there exist a sufficient a sufficient statistic so first of all we argued that if there is a statistics which satisfies this condition in the forward direction it is a sufficient statistic and i said that if there is another sufficient statistics for which this ratio holds i just argued that this ratio does not depend on theta and now if this ratio does not depend on theta we have this condition t of x equals to t of y this implies now what we started with this and we argued that this implies t of x equals to t of y so if t prime of x equals to t prime of y we are arguing that t of x equals to t of y what does this mean t is a minimal sufficient statistics okay so don't get lost in this that's what i did not discuss this yesterday but uh, go back and uh, you just uh, see that like how we are exploiting the sufficient sorry factorization theorems here in uh, deriving all these properties 
Okay, let us quickly discuss this uh, application now. Suppose I have some samples drawn from Gaussian distribution and where both mu and sigma square is unknown. And what is one possible sufficient statics for this? Sample mean and sample variance. Let us say I have two points x and y for which I have this sample mean and sample variant and another okay this should have been y here y and s1. And now let us see if I have this two I have this sufficient statistics which is computed on the two points x and y and let us compute this ratio. If I take this ratio we know how to write the joint PDF in the case of Gaussian distribution here. You can write this expression and you will see that the only way this guy you can make it independent of mu and sigma square by setting x bar equals to y bar and s x square equals to s y square. If they are not equal there is no way you can make it independent of mu and sigma square. Okay? So, this ratio becomes independent only when x bar equals to 1 that is your t of x the first part is sorry t1 equals to y and the second part is also same on those two points. So, here t1 is your x bar and t2 your sample variance. Okay. Now, one more quick example we will talk about uniform minimal statistic. So, this instead of Gaussian now we will be looking into uniform. Okay, Let us say I have a uniform distribution but the parameter is theta and theta plus 1. Now, I have this uniform distribution but now I am looking into uniform the interval length is 1 but it is starting at theta and ending at theta plus 1. Okay, now, I can write the joint PDF as it is going to be 1 if all the samples are between theta and theta plus 1. If any of the sample is outside this theta, then the joint PDF is going to be 0, right? that is obvious. Now, I can manipulate this. If I have to take all the samples right, and take max value of them, do you think the max value is going to be outside theta plus 1? No, it has to be below. right? So, that is why this max value of x i is going to be less than or equal to theta plus 1. So, this max value has to be less than theta plus 1. And similarly, if you take the minimum value of all the samples, Can this be smaller than theta? No, it has to be greater than theta. So, we can write theta to be minimum these samples. Now, you can check that if you take the ratio of this joint PDF at point x and y, they will be constant if and only if these two quantities are the same at points x and y. So, this will give me a hint about what could be the possible minimum sufficient statistics for sticks for this uniform distribution. It says that if you take t of x to quiz to minimum of this maximum of that, that is what is minimum of x i we called it as first order statistic and max value as that the nth order statistics right that is the last one. Then that becomes your minimal sufficient statistics. And you can also check that instead of looking into the minimal maximal, you can look into the difference between these two. That is x n minus x 1 and their average of the maximum minima value that is also minimal sufficient statistics. So, I am saying that this is also sufficient statistic, this is also sufficient statistic. I am giving you two sufficient statistics for uniform distribution. Then minimum such then what does it imply? 
can minimal sufficient statics be unique? No. So, there could be multiple sufficient statistics and there could be multiple minimal sufficient statistics. Okay. okay this last one slide we will cover about this uh, statistics and this will conclude our discussion on sufficiency principle. So, we just said that all our focus so far have been constructing a statistics which contains all the necessary information about the parameter of interest. But here ancillary statistics something which is not providing information about the parameter of my interest, but something complement about that. Okay? So, a statistics S of x whose distribution does not depend on the parameter is called sufficient sorry ancillary sufficient statistic. So, if I just to give you ancillary sufficient statistics, it does not provide maybe any information about your parameter theta. But when it is used in conjunction with other statistics, maybe it will provide more information. Okay, just to give a quick example, I said, okay, what does x n minus x 1 give you? Range. But if I just give you a range, does it tell you information about theta here? So, here let us say theta equals to 1 and uh, then it becomes 2. I could take theta equals to 2. So, in one case the range is 1 to 2 and in other case range is 2 to 3. So, the first one is telling you just the range information though sample could be coming from here or here. But on the other hand what this is giving you x n what this part is giving you average. So, will this average if I am going to take the sample average of this sample it is always going to lie in this right and if I am going to take the samples of this interval they are going to lie somewhere here. So, to know if I give a sample whether it belongs here or here is it enough to give me the range information? No, right? I need to give you some mean value also where potentially it can lie. So, here the, this x n minus x 1 can I treat it as a ancillary statistics about my parameter theta, but if I conject if I use it in conjunction with x n this average here it is providing me full information about my parameter theta and about the distribution. So, in fact, it becomes minimal sufficient statics in this case. So, that is the difference between your ancillary sufficient statistics. Okay, so, there is an example I will leave you to look into uh, this example because it has some more computation in this. So, with this we will conclude our discussion on the statistics. So, I hope you will all have understood what is the statistics, what is the sufficient statistics, what is the sufficient statistics, how to check for sufficiency and then how to check for minimal sufficient statistics and at the end is ancillary statistics.